In this video, we're going to keep talking about buy side stop orders. And specifically, we're going to take a look at what happens if we place our stop and our limit price beneath the current market price. In the previous video, when we showed how to use a buy side stop order, we put our limit price and our stop price above the current market price. And we got a great question on that video. And the question was, well, what will happen if we actually do the opposite? What if we put our stop order below the current market price? If we put our stop price and our limit price below the market price, can we do that? And if we did, what will happen? Before we dive in, let's take a look at this comment that we got. The question is, is it possible to use this, the buy side stop order, to buy if the price goes below a certain value and then starts to rise again? I just want to say this is a great question. And the reason this is a great question is because anytime we hear about a particular order type, we need to be thinking creatively. We need to be thinking, how can we use this particular order type? They are tools in our toolbox that we can use in any way that we can think of. And we should be thinking of different ways that we can use these order types to our advantage. So I just want to say, great question. Thanks, Paul, for bringing this up. So in the previous video, when we talked about buy side stop orders, we used Ethereum to showcase our example. But in this case, we're going to take a look at Litecoin to do this example. In the previous video, we took our buy side stop order and we placed our stop and our limit price above the current market price. So we can see here, Litecoin is trading around $55 a share. So if we were going to place a buy side stop order like we did in the previous video above the current market price, we would choose a limit and a stop price that were both above the current market price. So we might look right around $60 or just anywhere in between 55 and 60. For this example, we're going to be looking at prices down below right around 50. We'll use 50 as our trigger and then we'll use 50.25 for our limit price. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that the answer to whether or not we can do this is no. No, we cannot do this let's just take a look at what happens when we try and then we'll discuss why we can't actually use this order in this particular way so i'm here in gdax and what i want you to take a look at is the order book i want you to look at the spread i want you to look at the prices right around the spread that's the current market price if we look in the middle we can see the mid market price that gives us the distance between the best bid and the lowest ask so that's the midpoint of the spread so this is the market price when we talk about market price we're talking about the center or right around the spread that's what we mean by market price if we look just to the left in the order entry panel we can discuss this order and take a look at the parameters that have been configured now if we look just at the top we have stop selected we have the buy side selected for our amount we have fifty dollars usd for the stop price we've chosen 50 now that is below the current market price now the next thing we have is our limit price and we chose 50 25 so fifty dollars and 25 cent is going to be our limit now this setup is very similar to the setup that we had before in the previous video when we discuss buy side stop orders this time the difference is our parameters the stop price and the limit price are sitting below the current market price they're sitting below that $54 level now we're going to go ahead and place this buy order so I want you to be paying attention to the open order section you're going to see the open order hit the open order section and the next thing I want you to be paying attention to is just here on the order book I want you to be looking at 5025 so right there at that limit price level I want you to be paying attention to 5025 on the order book and I want you to be looking at the open order section and watch what happens we're gonna click buy in three two one we get our warning we have to click place order let's do it and notice what just happened we saw the open order hit the order book and it had just here next to the size we had a little badge and then a few seconds later we saw that went away and then we saw our order actually hit the order book at that 50 25 level or at that 50 20 level so at this point we have in our open order section one limit order currently open that order is sitting on the order book at 50 25 the question is what happened to our stop order we placed a stop order and now all we have is a limit order the stop order actually executed now it didn't execute immediately it took a couple of seconds as soon as we place the stop order gdax began monitoring the incoming last trading prices comparing them to our stop price and asking the question is this last trading price greater than or equal to or the stop price and that answer was true as soon as a trade came in and so our stop order executed what that means is that gdax on our behalf placed a limit order at our limit price so that's why we have 
have a limit price sitting on the order book at 5025 waiting to be filled by a taker. So what I want you to do is rewind the video just to the point where we clicked the place order button and we saw that stop badge that was displayed just to the left of the size column. And what I want you to watch is up in the top right in the trade history, no trades were actually occurring for those couple of seconds that that badge was being displayed in the open orders, that stop badge. Now, as soon as a trade comes in in the trade history, you're gonna notice right at that point, our stop order was triggered and that stop went away. We saw our quantity in our my size section hit the buy side order book. And that's because GDAX submitted that limit order for us. The behavior that we saw here doesn't necessarily have to be the behavior that you would see at any exchange. It's a really a programming or a coding question because GDAX can check those parameters whenever you're actually placing the order and they could have decided to reject that stop order at that point. If you wanted to do this, then you would just use a limit order because that's effectively what we've done. There's no need to do to use a stop if it's going to execute immediately. It's also not a big deal if you understand the buy side stop order and you understand how it's working. On GDAX, if you do place a buy side stop order and you have your limit price and your stop price parameters below the market price, what's going to happen is your order is going, the stop order is immediately going to be triggered and you're going to get a limit order placed for you immediately. Okay, I'm back. I was editing the video and I know I told you what to look at before, but I realized that I can actually show you. So I'm going to show you what I wanted you to look at before I describe it and I'm going to show you. So what I want you to be looking at is up here in the trade history. I want you to be waiting for the next trade to come through. And then down here in the open order section, I want you to be looking at that stop tag that's right there, it says stop at 50, that's gonna go away. Now those two things are gonna happen nearly simultaneously. And then at the same time, you're also gonna see in the my size section on the order book, right around the 5025 level, there's gonna be a limit order placed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just click play on this footage so you can see this happen. I'm gonna click play in three, two, one. So see, it was very quick. I'm gonna play it again. Let me back it up and I'm gonna play it one more time. Three, two, one. So that's really what. I wanted you to see as soon as that last trade came in it triggered our stop order which caused GDAX to submit a limit order for us I hope this video was helpful please like the video subscribe and support this deep lizard channel thank you